Welcome to the last module of this poem. In this module, I'll be explaining the literary devices used in this poem. As you all know, the poem comprises of five stanzas. Each stanza consists of four lines. The rhyme scheme followed in all these stanzas is A, B, C, B. The poem has two distinct settings as I have already said in the earlier module. The first setting is of the zoo where the tiger is kept inside the cage. And the second setting is of the natural habitat of the tiger where it actually belongs. Once again, I'll recite the poem. He stalks in his vivid stripes, the few steps of his cage, on pads of velvet quiet, in his quiet rage. The literary device used in the first answer, rhyme scheme, as I already said, that is A, B, C, B. Then the next poetical device used is personification, where the tiger is personified. Instead of using it, the poet has used he for tiger. The next poetical device which I am going to talk about is about metaphor. Uh, the soft skin under tiger's paw is compared to velvet. Then there is enjambment, means sentence continuing into the next line without any punctuation mark. See the first line as enjambment because it has been continued till the second line where there is a comma at the end. Then you have imagery where the poet is trying to create a, an image of the tiger and we can clearly visualize tiger walking in vivid stripes. Then we have consonants. When you read the line, uh, stalks, vivid stripes, the sound S is quite evident. And then we have assonance. The repetition of I sound is there in the lines in his vivid stripes. Then the last line we have oxymoron which means use of adjectives which is opposite in meaning. You can see in the last line quiet rage. It's opposite in meaning. Now we can move to the second stanza. He should be lurking in shadow, sliding through long grass, near the water hole where plum deer pass. Here one literary device is evident, enjambment, repeated in second and third lines. Then we have alliteration in last line, plum and pass. Here the sound per is repeated. Imagery is also used by poet. Activities of tiger. Here poet has used imagery. Now the third stanza. He should be snarling around houses at the jungle's edge, bearing his white fangs, his claws, terrorizing the village. In this again we have enjambment, the lines continuing to the next line without punctuation mark. We also have onomatopoeia using words which do not sound. We can found this in snarling. We can also see assonance that means the vowel sounds repeated. Here O is repeated in should around houses. And I sound is being repeated in bearing his white, his claws. Then we have consonants. The use of consonant sounds, sir, in his fangs, his claws. Is it clear? Now let's move to the fourth stanza. But he is locked in a concrete cell, his trunk behind bars, stalking the length of his cage, ignoring visitors. Here you can see personification. Again, the poet used he and his instead of it. Now we have assonance. That means the vowel sound E is being repeated here. He is locked in a concrete cell. Then the consonants. Again, the consonant sound sir is being repeated in his strength bars. Then alteration is also used. 
that means consonant sounds are repeated uh, in a sentence next to each other now the last stanza he hears the last voice at night the patrolling cars and stares with his brilliant eyes at the brilliant stars stanza also you can see a few uh, particle devices the first one enjambment here also uh, the third line is continued to the fourth line without a punctuation mark now we can see again alliteration is being used her sound is repeated near to each other then we have assonance where i sound is repeated that's all for today dears i hope you all were able to understand the literary devices and the poem read the poem well thank you